All right, welcome into another edition of the 2022 MLB Draft Show. And tonight we've got someone from the Pacific Northwest near and dear to my heart. We've got Cooper Jerpy out of Oregon State. Cooper, what's going on, man? Nothing much, man. Appreciate you guys having me on. Absolutely. Uh, so I got Chris done with me. Chris is making his MLB Draft Show debut. But today's about you, Cooper. I want to give you the opportunity to just... Tell us a little bit about Cooper Jerpy on the mound and tell us a little bit about what you like to do off the field. All right. Um, yeah, no, left-handed pitcher, obviously Oregon state university. Um, it's pretty funky delivery. It's always been that natural arm slot for me. I've gotten a lot of, a lot of questions about it and about like how, how I threw in like little league and stuff and, did you ever change to that certain arm side? It's always just been natural for me. Um, but yeah, no, I go out there. The main thing I look for when I'm pitching is just helping the team win, whatever whatever I can do in that um, realm is what I try to do every seven days for me. And my that's my job. So um, go out there, be competitive is, is, is all hell. And um, pound the zone, get outs quickly, uh, be efficient, that's about it. But um you know, like I said, winning is the main thing. Uh, we were talking with our our strength coach about that kind of stuff, and he he got asked a question: if you like winning or hate losing more, and it was definitely the the, uh, the hate losing. So um, sounds cliche, but it's true. You ask any competitor about that that question, they're going to give you the same response. Um, yeah, no, I mean, off the field, I love the golf. Our house loves the golf. Uh, I live with Fennings, Jake Fennings. Mats and AJ Ladder, so it's a pitcher house. And uh, during the off season, we just go out and golf. I mean, pretty much every other day. So um, obviously, I haven't had much time to do that right now with the season going and all. But um, you know, that that was the main thing, especially during the pandemic. So golf for Are you sure. Any good? Are you any good? When we were going consistently, I was I was getting down in the low eighties. But right now, I'd be scared to even try to swing a <laughs> golf club, to be honest. What you got, Chris? Do you golf lefty as well? Yeah, I do. You, you golf left-handed? Yeah. Was that yeah. did that come just as natural as throwing a baseball left-handed? Um, pretty much, yeah. To be completely honest with you, yeah, yeah. Our very just, own I Phil think I've done everything. <laughs> yeah, everything has been lefty, natural lefty for me that I can think of. I don't think I do anything right-handed, but how? how tired do you get of people talking to you about the delivery and people trying to maybe, you know, ask you about changing this or changing that? Do you ever get tired of that? Um, not really. I've, I honestly haven't had many people try to change my delivery. I think just because of how unique it is, um, but there's been a few people um, that have put it out there for um, just food for thought and, some what ifs, like maybe throw harder if I was over the top a little more. And I think, to be honest, I I, I don't think velo is something to sacrifice with um, the kind of repertoire that my mechanics have. I know I'm low nines, but you ask any hitter, and it kind of plays up in the mid to high nineties from that arm slot and and the uh, vertical approach angle. All that stuff um, comes into play from that release height and. I'm fine with it and it's worked out well ever since. So, yeah, I mean, I hope you don't mind. I got to drill into it because it, you're one of the most fascinating pitchers for me in this, in this eligible class. I know that you visited, uh, I know you visited driveline and you did some work with those guys. Mm -hmm. um, were you super into the data and the analytics and kind of your unique traits before that trip? Or um, was that an eye opener? Um, to an extent, but, it was definitely an eye opener for sure when we first got there just to, about how much stuff they had. They had these, a, a boatload of, you know, track man, electronics, speed cameras, all that stuff. And, um, it was worth the investment for sure. We went up there for about three weeks, almost a month. And it was just getting the idea of how to manipulate the ball. And not only that, but developing a solid routine throughout the whole week and not just one certain day. Um, and I've definitely been incorporating that stuff into my, my season this far, um, sticking to it pretty strict, to be honest. And, you know, I do the plyo balls, all that stuff that driveline does. And, um, it's been working out. My arm feels great. It's the best I've felt since I've been in college. So, um, yeah, worth the investment and, um, pretty interesting stuff they got going on and 
Seattle right now and at uh, at driveline. Really quick, Chris, before we jump over, um, Cooper, was there one thing specifically? I know processes is is a big one with driveline, but in terms of the the data, was there one thing that really sticks out about kind of your profile or what you learned? Um. I was actually looking at it the other day and it was it was definitely the release height. It was like three feet nine inches or something like that consistently. Um, <laughs> which was pretty absurd because I know I live yeah. with um Fennings and he's the exact opposite of that. And he was I think near the seven foot range from when he released the ball. So it was pretty pretty cool to see that kind of stuff. That has gotta be hell on a weekend lineup. You and then Fennings back yeah. to back. Unreal. Yeah. For okay, sure. Chris. Cooper, have you thought about particular guys that you've faced before? I know obviously as a pitcher, you have to be confident that you're going to get every guy out there every single time, every batter that steps in the box. But looking mm-hmm. back at your at, at your career, whether it's college or someone you faced in high school even, is there any one guy in particular that you just do not like to face and when he steps in the box, you almost kind of cringe a little bit? Is there any guy like that for you? Um, this year, not as much as last year, but last year is mainly Brock Jones. Um, he had very quick hands and could get to any, any pitch, um, over the plate and even off the plate if he, if he needed to. Um, so I'd say Brock Jones for that part. And then this year I'd say I got, I threw one bad pitch to Dylan Beavers and he took it over the fence. So um, <laughs> I'd say him for sure this year. That'll happen with the viewers. I'm those sure those are not bad names <laughs> yeah. to be taken by. <laughs> it's yeah. not a bad, yeah. not a bad group there. You throw out. I dig it, man. What yeah. do you think? How, how do you how do you attribute the the strides that you've made from 2021 into 2022? Because you're having a hell of a season, and you really seem mm-hmm. to have taken that next step. To be honest with you, I think it was driveline. Um, Going or up to Seattle, it was kind of that pitch design thing was what we were going for, not necessary velocity. And um, like I said, through the routine and then consistently going to them and learning what they have to say about certain pitches um, was definitely worth it. You know, I was still throwing, trying to throw that loopy curveball to get more depth on it. And they said, basically, um, they're talking about it a lot right now, but the sweeper slider is going to be the more... Um, easy pitch to say for my arm slot and it it's obviously worked for me um developing the grip and noticing how it's spinning through the high speed cameras that they have and what i can do to make it move more move less with more velo and uh, blah 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 but definitely the pitch design is was something that paid off for me and to definitely hone in on the off speed stuff to make it more consistent throughout the the entire outing was something that i was trying to focus on and i think i'm doing a pretty good job at thus far so yeah, you've kind of moved to a to a Robbie Ray fall off the table firm slider. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just disappearing. I dig it, man. Mm-hmm. Cooper, obviously mm-hmm. the next the next couple of months are going to be really exciting for you. Um, have you had any conversations with friends, former teammates, current big leaguers uh, about you know what this experience is like and and what you can and what you should expect? Uh, so I was. Uh, um, Nathan Burns, actually alumni, uh, he played with us last year and the year at, um, for co- for that COVID year and then the year after. Um, but just talking to him, getting insight on how the minor leagues is going for him, he's doing pretty well um, from what he's been saying. But you know, it's definitely a uh, he kind of compared the minor leagues to you know summer ball and stuff like that. You know, always traveling and what have you. But um, you know, we we're talking about all that kind of stuff and how he's doing in the minor leagues. And it was basically just the kind of getting you traveling. And I know we do that to an extent here in uh, college ball, but he said it was almost a different animal in minor leagues. Um, so that was the main, the big thing that we talked about um, in comparison to, to college ball. But, um, you know, it was mainly that. And then, you know, talking about, like I said, the release side of my, my fastball and stuff like that. And then his vertical approach, it was, it was we could have gone for, for hours about that kind of stuff, but I dig it. That's cool, man. Um, the rest of the way, you, I mean, you guys are having a good season. Uh, you've got a little bit of uh, time here to go. What are you personally looking to mm-hmm. accomplish? What are you looking to accomplish as a team? Kind of what's next for you and Oregon state here? 
For me personally, I think it's just staying out of the loss column. Um, I think that's the main stat to look at is the wins and losses. Like I've been talking about throughout this whole meeting we've had so far, it's it's all about winning for, for Oregon State. And um, we've obviously done a great job of that so far. And um, it's almost – we haven't even had like a, a put, put it all together game besides that ASU game where we won 21-0. to zero. And I think that was something that kind of gave us an image of what we were capable of day in and day out throughout every game. And um, there's I think there's been sometimes there's been like lack of energy and – waiting for someone else to do the job and uh, stuff like that. But um, I think once we get it to all click and get it going and when we get hot in the postseason, we're going to be a, um, a huge threat at least. So There's always been dynamite culture in, in Corvallis, but how much do you attribute uh, some of the current success of the program to Mitch Canham? Because Mitch seems to have brought a new energy uh, to Corvallis over the last few years. I mean, he's he's the glue of this organization and the program, obviously. Um, he's taught us everything, or at least for me, everything I know about the, the game through throughout my college career. And um, it's a lot of little things, taking care of the little things, doing the right thing, um, focusing on one game at a time and only controlling the controllables and not, not focusing on the uh, the uncontrollable stuff is basically what, what he hones in on and harps on the most. Um, and I think that he brings the energy day in and day out, regardless of how he's feeling personally. And um, he's willing to pour into into us and uh, more than himself to make us better, which is, you know, everything you ask for in a head coach, which is awesome. Um, so like I said, he brings the energy, um, always always has a smile on his face, and it's it's go time when we get to the field. And he, he, he makes us uh, aware of that for sure. I dig it. Chris, do you have any more questions, my man? So I got to, we, we got to, we can't get you out of here without asking because you talked about it in the beginning, how much you golf and how much you mm-hmm. and the guys go out golfing together, but we didn't ask you who's the best golfer on the team. Best on the team. Staff included Darwin Bar- Barney, hands down. That guy is a, a wizard on the golf course. I, I didn't even guy, know Darwin I mean, was there. He just straight shot every time. Nice. Yeah, Darren Barney. Yeah, he's one of our assistants. But um, you know, the guy, he, he's he's good at everything he does. It's crazy. Nice. All right, man. But, yeah, no, I'm gonna Darwin hit, for sure. I like it. Uh, I'm gonna hit you with some rapid fire questions here. Usually, we do three or four of them to end these uh, to end these interviews. Put you on the hot seat a little bit. Give okay. me a chance to uh, talk about the team. I'm gonna start with uh, a freshman at Oregon State. What's the one thing that mm-hmm. you've learned about Australia from Travis Bazana? They use a lot of slang. I've learned about bloat, <laughs> the bogan, a bunch of other different words they, they use to describe things that are just normal words for us. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, it, I, I felt kind of stupid in the moment, but he was talking about how cold it is in June and Jan- or, uh, July in Australia. I'm like, how is it cold? And they're, it's like, <laughs> it's obvious they're living on the other side of the world. But, um, you yeah, know, that guy, he's a great guy. All right, man. Uh, who has the worst fashion sense at the or uh, on your team worst fashions Ooh. i'd probably have to say my roommate aj the guy <laughs> i mean it's just always oregon state it's always oregon state gear which isn't is, isn't bad but you know you gotta switch it up every now and again <laughs> a little north right. face doesn't hurt <laughs> yeah yeah all exactly. right well, last question here and then we'll hit you with the with the i guess one more um your college career is is uh, at least the season is coming to an end. Um, what fan base in the Pac-12 really needs to step up their game? Hmm. I'd say USC. It was quiet the whole time. Um, it almost felt like it was a ghost town, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, no disrespect or anything, but it was you know it was. Um, below average for sure below average uh, <laughs> private schools man am i right <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right last question this is how we end every single show uh what is the one thing cooper that you know about anything that is unique and not a lot of people know something i think is unique hmm. it's a great question i i could i don't even know I don't know. (laughs) All right, man. 
We're going to let you deep. go. Too deep. It's too deep. I can't think that deep on a Monday. <laughs> Come on. What the hell? <laughs> Cooper, man. Exactly. My appreciate... day's almost over. Come on. <laughs> it's just the beginning of a week. <laughs> hey, man, we, uh, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, I think there's big things ahead for Cooper Jerpy and, of course, the Oregon State Beavers. We're rooting for you, man. Go get him, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Thanks, Cooper. Very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. See you, bud.